Hello, in this presentation, we're going to talk about an adjusting entry for the loans payable, breaking out the loans payable from one account to two accounts that the short term portion of the loan payable and the long term portion of the loan payable. If you've been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will make an adjusting entry to look at our loans payable accounts, breaking out that short term portion versus the long term portion when making financial statements. If you have the backup file, you can restore that backup file by going to the File tab and Restore to this point. We currently have the open windows list open and open in order to open that we'd go to view at the top and the open windows list item. The only open window we have right now is the home tab in order to open the home tab go to the company tab and the home tab. What we're going to do now are some adjusting entries and in order to do so we will first look at the financial statements and do some adjustments to those financial sta statements in accordance to accepted accounting principles so we're going to go up to the reporting up top we're going to go to company and financial and scroll down to the balance sheet standard we're going to change the date i'm going to do that by going to the date range and work on the date that we are currently working on which is 0101212122 so that's january 1st 2021 to february 28th 21. So this is going to be for that two month time period that we are running this report for. We're going to select OK. And what we're focusing in on here will be the loans payable account. So when we actually present these financial statements to outside users, we typically would need to break out in the current and long term portion of the loan that we have outstanding. So here's our loan right now. There's our loan payable account. It's often useful for us to use one account to, to record it to because that amount will change as we go when we make more payments. So it's good to make a system in terms of how we're just going to make payments to it. And then when we report it or when we want to make decision making uh, on the financial statements, it's useful to have the current portion broken out of this loan amount so that we know how much of it is going to be due relatively soon so that we can make decisions based on that. If we present it also outside the company we would, we would need to break this number out if we double click on this number and look at the detail of it we see that we started with the 22 we took out 50,000 another loan and then we took out another 5,000 down here these two we're going to say are the same loan that we we um, took out to get to that 72,000 so we have a one loan at $72,000 in other words and then we took out this other loan when we purchased furniture and fixture this is the one we're going to focus on here when we put this loan on the books we put it just into the loans payable account that we have but now we want to break out the current portion and we're basically going to say that this loan is just a uh, a loan that's going to be due within six months and therefore all current so this is going to be a current loan let's take a look at the amortization table just to get an idea of that and how uh, the two loans how these different loans could be put together and then we'll just recategorize this loan to the current portion of a loan. These will be our amortization schedule. So this loan, we often just have the terms, but just to give an idea of the loan, we're going to say it's a $5,000 loan we took out for the equipment. It's going to be paid in six months and the rate is 6%. We're going to say that this loan, we're just going to pay at the end. So we're going to pay back both the loan and all of the interest at the end of the loan. Note that loans can be set up in many different ways on, in terms of how they're going to, how the interest will be paid, how the principal will be paid. Next time we'll take a look at a loan that's set up more like a traditional loan in terms of a mortgage where we pay back some of the interest and the principal on that 72000 where we will have to break out a short term and long term portion. But this one, we're going to put it all in the short term. But we do want to make some distinction about what is interest and do we have to include interest. And in order to do that, let's look at the amortization table. Many times they don't give us an amortization table when we get a loan, but we can derive it or we can ask our accountant to put one together for us just to see what the kind of interest payments we are looking at. So if we have a $5,000 loan, it's going to be due in six months and the interest rate is 6% and we're just going to pay it all back interest and principal at the end of the loan then how much are we going to have to pay back? We can do this type of calculation. 
within Excel, there's a there's a fair value calculation or future value calculation, I should say. And there's a couple ways you can find it. One is you can go to the icon here and type in future value calculation. And it's this future value right here. If you go through that section, you can say OK and go through the, um, the little boxes that they have here. The rate is going to be 6%, but that's per year. And we're going to divide it by 12 for a per month rate because we're paying every month. That's the trickiest part of this calculation or pretty much the trickiest part. Uh, the, num the number of payments is going to be uh, six, even though there's only going to be one payment. And when, with this type of loan, again, that's a little bit, little bit tricky to, to see. We're going to make the payments, however, zero. So the point of this is saying, hey, there's, instead of having a, an annuity where we have constant payments, we're going to use a similar uh, valuation field. We're going to use the same kind of function, but we're going to say that there's six payments of zero just to tell the computer there's six periods that we need to compound the interest over. And then we're going to use this field that we wouldn't really need for an annuity, but we do need uh, when we do this present value of one calculation because of the way we did this um, number of payments and the payments being zero and that present value being the 5,000. So if we go through, if we enter this data, we can see that we're going to have to pay back 5,152. If I want to make that a uh, positive number, then I can go to this formula. I can double click on it and I just want to flip the sign. So I'm in front of the formula. I'm going to just put a negative and that basically says, hey, multiply this times negative one and that'll flip the sign so the payment will be positive. So that's what we're actually going to pay at the end of the time period. So then our question is, of course, how much of it should be short term versus long term? On the balance sheets now given the fact that we're going to pay 5,152 at the end of the time period just to see this accrual one other kind of way if we put this into our amortization table uh, which we'll do in, in the long term as well we're going to say the payments again are zero the interest per month is going to be 5,000 the principal times the six percent divided by 12 that's the interest rate per month well, that's going to be the interest per month. And then the reduction in, in the principal is actually going to go up. It's going to be an increase in the principal because uh, the payment is not greater than the interest. So there's going to be an increase in the principal. And in essence, we are owing this uh, 5000 is increasing by the amount of interest. And if we do that, if we continue to do that, we're basically saying there's no payment uh, for each of these periods. We're saying the interest now is going to change. It's going to be this new principal after the first month times 6%. And then we're going to divide that by 12. That would be per year. We're going to divide it by 12 for 12 months. Another 25. We're going to say the principal deduction then, of course, is 25. And this um, and that, this minus that is going to increase it. To 5050 and if we continue this process down for the six payments the interest will change uh you up oh, what did i do what did i do i'm gonna take this number needs to be an absolute value so we're gonna say in b3 I'm gonna make that absolute value so when i copy it down it'll take that cell every time and then if we do this and copy that down uh, we should get to this number here. So this number matches. So that's just an idea of the amortization schedule. We'll have to do that and it'll make more sense. It'll be more necessary when we do the long-term portion uh, or the short-term and long-term portion of the long-term debt, which has both a long-term and short-term portion. What we want to see here, what we want to note here though, is that the interest rate, the loan is for 5,000. We know we're going to have to pay within the year 5,152 However, we're just going to be dealing with the 5,000 now because this 152 has not yet been earned. And therefore, even though we know we're going to pay it within the short term time period, within a year, we're not going to uh, include it until it's actually been earned. So if we go back to QuickBooks, then I'm going to close this back out. All we really need to do is move this portion up 5,000 of this loan long long term loan payable into the current liabilities which means I need another account up here for uh, the current loan payment 
and uh, it needs to be an other current liability type account and we need to move 5,000 to it. A couple ways we can do this. One, the most traditional way is to make a journal entry and we would go to uh, company and make journal entry and we can we can make a journal entry in that format and we would debit or we would debit the loan payable decreasing it and credit the current loan payable increasing it but if we want to try to do the adjusting entries without um, without knowing debits and credits we could try to do this with registers so we will do it with registers we won't try but we'll go to the loan payable register and say that this needs to go down by 5,000 and then we'll put the other side to a new account we'll make which is called other current payable so we're going to do this without debits and credits even though they're adjusting entries if we can and what we will be able to so we're going to go to banking we're going to use uh, registers and we're going to go down to the liability accounts and we want this loan payable and say okay so we're going to have a register kind of like a check register it looks like a check register but it's really the register of the loan payable account there's our balance in it we want to decrease it so as of the end of the month as of 022821 we want to decrease this by 5000 and then we're going to move that to the other uh, account a new account we're going to create and it's going to be called um let's call it uh, loan loan payable current portion we'll just call it loan payable current uh what happened loan payable current all right and so we're going to say tab and it's going to ask us if we want to add a new account and we do we will set that up then and it's not going to be an expense so make sure we change that drop down that's we'll change this drop down to other current liabilities so we want to make sure it's a current liability and selecting that item everything else should remain the same so we're going to say save and close and we want want to put here that it's adjusting entry so maybe uh, a DJ for adjusting entry and it's going to be to uh, break out current portion of loan something like that make sure to select a tab or enter and make sure we're on the next line and then when we go to the balance sheet it should adjust so if we go to the balance sheet looking in the current portion then we see that 5,000 there has been brought up to the current portion double clicking on it we see the 5,000 here. We see our memo. Double clicking on that takes us to the register. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. We scroll back down. We see the long term payable here. Double clicking on that. We see that the 5,000 has been removed. And now we're basically left with the balance of the other loan, the long term loan. And uh, that's what we're going to have to deal with next time. So we, removed, we removed the one loan that was totally short term. The other loan we have in place has a short-term and long-term portion. So that one's going to be a little bit more difficult because we'll just have to remove part of it. So now that we've seen one loan that's completely short-term versus long-term, next time we'll try to look at these amortize. We will look at these amortization tables and see the portion that needs to be moved when part of it is short-term and part of it is long-term.